Walker back in. On the baseline. Mandeldove, number 32, is checked in. Spot duty. And Dyson in an offensive foul. This will go against UConn. And really, even though Mandeldove picks up the foul, that's on Kimball Walker because he didn't allow the big fella to get the screen set. He, he took off before he was set, and that's why they pick up the offensive foul. So Mandeldove picking up his first. As Pargo brings it up the floor, guarded by Kimball Walker, the freshman from the Bronx. Pargo driving, stops, kicks, downs, rises, and it's... You talked about when we came back. Pargo, pick and roll, getting into the paint, forcing help, finding shooters because he keeps his head up. So after being down by 11, Gonzaga has got the UConn lead to one. Edwards, can he get the bounce? No. Bat it out. And the rebound goes to the Zag. Here comes Pargo. Gonzaga with a chance to take the lead. Pick and roll. They're going to run this until UConn proves to them that they can guard it. Pargo to the basket. And when you don't have a presence to defend the rim, it makes it a lot easier. And the confidence is rising from Gonzaga's standpoint. Gonzaga going up by a point. 37 to 36. Now Bryce. Dyson deep in the corner. Bryce off balance. Connecticut now. 14 of 31 from the field. Make that 14 of 32. Now you're a fan of the NBA game. Well, that's a little bit of a heat check there. He didn't want to wait for that pick and roll. The problem is it leads to an opportunity like this in the open floor. And Foster off the bench. He's a seven-footer. Getting all the way down the floor to pick up the rebound. That's a huge play that UConn doesn't convert because you know what's coming now. They're going to continue to run this pick and roll until Gonzaga proves that they can stop it. Here's Pargo. Foster comes off the screen. Pargo turns the corner, wheels, stripped on the way up. A.J. Price in control now. UConn had the big lead. They're not going to be disappointed basically being tied in, in essence, a road game and not having to beat in the game for the last eight minutes and 50 seconds. Price tried to needle it inside, stolen away by Steve Gray. Nice play. Gray has been one of the huge leaders for this Gonzaga squad. So the shot clock is turned off. Game clock at 17. We talked about size against speed. Look at how much bigger Bolden is over A.J. Price. If they can turn the corner. And a foul called on Micah Dones, a move, Micah Downs, rather, a moving screen. And don't forget, coming up on AT&T at the half, Tim Brando and Seth Davis will get you caught up on a very busy day in college basketball involving a number of matchups between top 25 teams. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. 10.04 to play in the first half. Bulldogs up 37-36. And as well as, as Gonzaga's played offensively down the stretch, it's really been about what they've done defensively. This zone has totally taken UConn out of their rhythm offensively. They, they have not been able to get to the rim, and thus we have not been effective shooting the basketball. Here's Price driving, leans inside and draws a foul, and we'll go to the line. Smart move. By A.J. Price. That was a veteran move. He attacked Brown. He knew he had a quickness advantage there. And basically, he put the onus on the official by initiating contact. Big play because they need something positive as they get ready to go into the half. So A.J. Price. Six points in the first half from Amityville. And he ties it up at 37. Now Sticks Robinson checks back in. The other thing that's happened, Gonzaga's offense has improved. It's also allowed them to set their defense. You haven't seen UConn in the open floor much with all that quickness. And if this game becomes five on five, it's a huge advantage for Gonzaga because of their size and their strength on the perimeter. So Price. Gets the second one to go. Huskies with a one-point lead. Four seconds to play. Cargo. No charge, got it off. Oh, the front rim, no. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Connecticut 38, Gonzaga 37. 
And Jim Calhoun's question whether or not this was a charge. It looked like position might have been established, but he, he did have pretty good body control to uh, uh, try to avoid it and knock down the three. Huskies up by a point at the break. We'll send you to Tim Brando in New York with AT&T at the half. After these messages, you're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. All right, 38-37, Connecticut with the halftime lead. Gus Johnson along with Greg Anthony. Interesting first half. Connecticut at one point up by 11. Gonzaga comes back and some players that uh, we weren't ready uh, for ended up having great first half. They did. That's one reason why both these teams have a chance to play in Detroit because of the depth. When you talk about Stephen Gray, he was by far the best player on the floor in that first half. He had 13 points. The only guy able to score at the rim with the beat in the game. And he also is a knockdown shooter from the perimeter. Also led him in rebounding with four. But UConn got a huge boost from Gavin Edwards as well. He came in and provided an interior presence, scored six points, also was active on the offensive glass, six rebounds in that first half. One reason why both these teams right now competing in a one-point game. All right, let's take a look at the Bud Light first half stats. How about the field goal percentage for Gonzaga? That, to me, is really impressive. Remember, UConn, one of the best defensive teams in the country. They're shooting almost 52% from the field, and they've done a great job defensively of containing the transition of UConn. They've made them a half-court team and that's why they really struggle the latter stages of that first half today's game is being brought to you in high definition by Harris Corporation the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media so on one hand you have players like Gray and Edwards stepping up and the players that we thought were going to have big games didn't have great first half no but they don't have to when you talk about the beat he doesn't have to have a dominant game statistically but he has to be on the floor if you're UConn, that's where his difference is going to be felt. Heifelt, I think, will get a little bit more activity going offensively, but they're going to look to really dominate this game with their guards. They feel like that's their strength. He's just got to have an impact on the interior. Jeremy Pargo, the point guard for the Zags, a very solid first half. And he's real confident playing against smaller guards. He really feels like he can attack them and push, his, push them around. He did a great job of getting to the rim consistently throughout this game. Look at just big boy and people down on the block. And that's something if you're UConn, you got to contain his penetration and really stop his ability to get to the rim. Pargo, 10 points, two assists, and one rebound in the first half as the Zags huddle it up one more time before the second half gets ready to begin. And what should we pay attention to as this second half gets underway? Well, first, if you're UConn, how are you going to attack the zone? Really, when Gonzaga went to that zone, it changed the entire complexion of this game offensively, and they did a great job defensive transition-wise. The beat has got to become more of a factor for UConn, both offensively and defensively. Now, tomorrow, the playoff shakedown continues as Big Ben and the Steelers battle Kerry Collins and the Titans. Or Brett and the Jets take on the Seahawks. Check local listings beginning with J.B., Dan, Coach, Shannon, and Boomer on the NFL today. As you take a look at some teams that uh, have fallen today, top ten tumbles. Texas, Xavier, and Louisville. How about Tubby and Minnesota? Doing a great job. Still undefeated, playing great basketball. Big Ten as a whole has really improved. Michigan State getting two time back, obviously now looking like a team we thought they'd be in the preseason. And Duke defensively on the perimeter as good as anybody in America. Totally disrupting what Xavier wanted to do offensively. And Mike Krzyzewski benching his starters after that loss last week to the Michigan Wolverines. And Michigan, another team with John Beeline playing great basketball this year. Big Ten should be a very interesting conference to watch as the regular season gets going. Now keep in mind, when the beat left the game at 8.50, with 8.50 left in the second half, they were up eight. Or now up nine, I should say. And then Gonzaga from that point on outscored them by eight points. And basically because they could attack the rim and also get offensive rebounds. So let's see if they can keep with that rhythm now with the beat back in the game. So we start the second half. One point game, Connecticut. As Cargo joins Bolden, Heitfeld, Day, and Down. Bolden. Day, backdoor Pargo posting again off the glass. High and in. Great offensive set by Gonzaga. They got the beat out of the paint and then had a quick weak side post from Pargo and he's able to finish before the help gets there. So Pargo with 12 points, 
He had 23 when they faced each other last year in Hartford. Eight big ones down the stretch. Price. That one halfway down. Pops out. Heidfeld with the rebound. Here come the Zags. Day to the basket. Up. And it won't stay down. Safe from going out of bounds. Adrian, though, with the presence. Inside the beat. Can't get it. What a foul. Take a look at the beat right here. Watch how he elevates up off of the off the paint, and then you're going to see them run a, a UCLA rub cut right there to the block. Weak side post and see the beat never.